I'm going to show you a pretty simple trick you can use to pick professional looking color schemes for your applications. So the title of this video probably looks a bit clickbaity, uh, talking about you know, tricks you can use to automatically pick awesome colors for your application, but uh, there really is something really simple you can do, even if you don't understand color theory, if you don't really have any sense of how to pick appropriate colors for your application, there is a sort of mathematical approach you can take to creating shades of the colors you're using. So I have a whole blog post that goes into a lot of depth into a strategy you can use for picking a good color scheme for your application and keeping it consistent. So if you're interested in this, I definitely recommend reading that entire blog post. But what we're going to do in this video is focus on how we can use some simple techniques to create shades of existing colors. So with the application you're creating, you might just have one main color, uh, it might be a yellow or a red or whatever you want. Uh, an easy way to go about creating a good color scheme is just to have a basic sort of whites or blacks, if you're going light or dark theme for your application, and then one accent color. But the difficulty comes in when you need to create shades of those colors of those lights or those darks or your main color. Uh, you might need slight variations of the same color depending on the context in which you want to use it. So let's just jump into seeing how these techniques work in practice. Okay, so I just have a simple application up on screen now. Uh, this is uh, an Ionic application in particular, but that doesn't really matter at all here. Uh, all I've done is set up six boxes on the screen. You might be able to see that. Uh, it just has a faint gray outline. And what we're going to do is just pick a color and then create two shades from that original color. And so we're just going to assume we don't really know how to pick good colors. We're just sort of playing around here. And we're just gonna follow the process to get a good color scheme. This isn't going to involve uh, me sort of having a look and thinking, hmm, does this look good? Uh, we're just gonna follow the formula. So to start off with, we need a base color to work from, and that could be difficult to do also. Uh, if you're not good at picking colors, you might not even know where to start. So what I would recommend people do is just go take one that looks good. There is plenty of color palettes out there that are great. Uh, one website I find particularly useful is flatuicolors.com. Uh, they have a whole range of different palettes in, but most of them are very good. You can just pick one and just choose a color you like. And these are sort of already, you know, good colors. You don't have to worry about getting this step wrong. So what I'm going to do is just pick one of these. We're gonna use this yellow as our base color. And once we have our base color, we can just use this sort of mathematical approach to creating the shades of that color that we need. So what I'm gonna do here is just manually set the background color on this first box to our new color that we just picked. Now, an important step in this process is by default, generally people will use these uh, hex codes to define colors that isn't particularly useful for what we are trying to do. So what we're going to do to start off with is just switch this to uh, HSL format. So you can click the little arrows twice here if you're using Chrome DevTools. And you can see now that it's defined in this HSL format, which uh, stands for Hue, Saturation and Lightness. Now I want to deliberately avoid getting into color theory stuff in general, because that's not really what this video is about but it is useful to understand what these values actually mean. So the first value, the H, uh, the hue, is essentially the color that we're working with. So if you look at this little rainbow bar here, this is the, uh, the color that we want to work with. So you can see we have reds, pinks, blues, greens, and so on. Uh, so this is where we sort of start from with our color. And then we have the saturation value, which kind of uh, defines how much of that hue is in the overall color. So if this is set to, or this yellow color here right now, the saturation is set to 89%. So there's a lot of that yellow in the overall color. If we drop this down to 29%, there is less of the yellow in the color and it's starting to look more gray. If we set it to 100, then we have a full bright yellow color. It has all of the, the hue in the color. And then we have the lightness value, which essentially specifies how light or dark the color is. So the lighter it is, the more bright and white it is going to be, 
the lower the lightness value is, it's going to be darker and blacker. So if we just have a quick look at that, bump it up to 90, you can see that it is very bright now. There's a lot of white in there. If we drop it down to 10, it's now very dark and has a lot of black in there. So that might not be the most technically accurate way of describing what is happening there, but that is sort of a good way to think about it. We have the color itself, how much of the color is in the color, and then how bright or dark the color is. And this alpha value on the end is just a transparency value. Okay, so let's just go back to our original color. And now we're going to duplicate this uh, into the next box and we are going to create a lighter shade. And we're going to focus on two different techniques in this video. So the first technique we're going to use is just altering the saturation and the lightness. So what I'm going to do is just copy that. We're going to inspect the next box, paste that in there. And now we're going to change this one to be a bit lighter. So you might just think we need a, a lighter version of this color. So we'll make we'll up the lightness value, make it a bit brighter, for example. And that certainly achieves that goal to an extent. Now that isn't all that we should do. If we want a color to look good, that isn't the only step we should take. As we are uh, increasing the lightness value, we should also decrease the saturation. So as the color is getting brighter, the amount of the color uh, that is in the color is reducing. Uh, I just messed up some values by scrolling there. So let me just undo that. I have a magic mouse and sometimes the scrolling gets a little bit out of control. So the general formula that I outlined in the blog post is basically to increase the lightness. If we're going into lighter shades, we want to increase the lightness by around 10 to 15%. You can play with this uh, to sort of get it to your liking, but that's a general idea. So with this case, let's go with uh, 15%. So we're gonna increase our lightness value from 50 to 65. But uh, as well as that, we are also going to decrease the saturation value. And if we've increased the uh, lightness by 10 to 15%, we're going to decrease the saturation by around three to 5%. Again, it, it depends. Uh, but if you don't really know what you're doing, you can just stick with these hard values, go you know, 15, five, um, that's fine. So we're going to decrease that to uh, 84. And now we have our uh, next shade of that color, which is a bit lighter than the previous one. And so we could increase those values if we wanted to make that step uh, a bit larger. If we wanted a much lighter shade, we could just, for example, double those values. Now we're just going to repeat the same thing again. We're going to copy our second color and then we are going to create another yellow square here. And again, we're going to modify this value. We're going to bump up this by another uh, 15%. So let's make that 80 now. And then we're going to make the saturation about 79. So now we have three shades of our yellow color here that get lighter as they go. And this is a pretty good result, uh, but there is something we can do that it's a little bit more advanced that will make this look a lot better. So we'll just jump into doing it and then we'll have a look at the result. So this technique is called hue shifting, which is the main focus of this video. So what I'm gonna do is just steal that original color again. And we're gonna start off from the same base color in the row beneath. So it's gonna make, us, uh, make it easier to sort of see the difference. And we're gonna do the exact same thing again. Uh, let's even just, uh, we'll copy all these uh, exact values rather than redoing it. I'll probably uh, get the numbers wrong. So we're going to have uh, an exact copy to work from. Now what we're going to do this time is take a look at this second box. So we already have our lightness being increased from 50 to 65, our saturation being decreased by 5%. But what we're also going to do is modify the hue itself. So we're not just making the color uh, brighter or darker, we are going to change the color entirely. And so the basic idea of what we want to do here is if we're, we're creating a lighter shade, we're gonna bump up the hue towards the, the hotter end of the spectrum. So you can see now where this circle is on this rainbow bar. Uh, it's sitting already towards the red side of the scale. Uh, but what we're going to do is just bump that a little bit further along towards the red. And if we were creating darker shades, we would move to the cooler end of the spectrum. So we'd bump it to the left. 
Now I'm not going to manually drag this uh, circle, which you could do, but it's a little bit inaccurate and we only want to modify the hue by around again, three to five. So what I'm going to do to move this circle to the right, to the hotter end of the spectrum, we're going to have to drop the hue value. So I'm going to change that from 48 to 45. And then we're going to do the same thing again with our third color. Now remember that we've already bumped this uh, to 45. So that's our starting point now. And um, now we're going to bump it even further up towards the hotter end of the spectrum by dropping it to again, 42, 41. Uh, you can just see what you like. And now you can see the difference in the two results. Now your interpretation of these colors might depend on perhaps, um, how good you are with colors. Uh, you may have some form of color blindness, in which case this is going to be extremely difficult to tell any difference at all. But this second row is generally, I think, much more pleasing. It is a much more attractive color palette. The top line kind of looks like it is just getting a bit washed out, a bit dirty as it gets lighter. Whereas this bottom palette uh, has much more sort of attractive, warm and inviting colors. And the entire difference here is just bumping that hue just a little bit, uh, just changing the color ever so slightly. Now we've been creating lighter shades. You can also create uh, darker shades, of course, uh, but you're going to kind of have to reverse that process. So just to make that clear, let's do one more example of creating some darker shades from an original base color. So I'm just going to refresh this to get rid of our yellows. And we'll go back to our flat UI colors and just pick a new color. Let's go with this uh, blue. So again, we're going to dump that into our first box. I have to actually write background color. We're going to switch from hex codes to HSL. And then I'm just going to copy that same color into our second box. And now we're going to start modifying it. So Last time we were increasing the lightness and decreasing the saturation. So since we're creating darker shades, now we're going to decrease the lightness and increase the saturation. So what I'm going to do is uh, bump this lightness down to 40. So I'm reducing it by 13%. And if you're worried about the exact values I'm using here, there's really no reason I'm using 13 instead of 15 here. Um, mostly I'm using 13 because it's going to make it a nice round 40. Uh, so don't, yeah, don't worry too much about that. And now let's bump that saturation up to say 74. And now we're going to modify our hue again. And again, we want to go towards that colder side of the spectrum, which is going to be further into this blue zone. So what we're going to do again is bump that hue. This time it's going to go up because it's going to the left, kind of looks a bit backwards, but let's Increase that to seven, uh, sorry, 208. And that's our first shade. Uh, let's again, copy that second one, pop it in the third box. And again, we'll drop the lightness. We'll go all the way down to 25 this time. Decrease the saturation, or rather increase the saturation uh, to 79. And then we're going to bump the hue to about uh, let's go to 212. Again, just moving towards that cooler end of the spectrum, but not going too far. Okay, so there we have our darker shades of our initial lighter blue color. And again, I think we have quite a pleasing result here. I don't have the non-hue shifted version to compare to, but you know, we'll just assume that would have been worse. So this is a great way to, I guess, practice and play around with these colors. Just literally open up an app with some squares in it, some divs, whatever. Uh, you could even just modify an existing website and just play around with this technique, set some colors and see if you can create a pleasing uh, color palette. And again, I definitely recommend checking out the blog post. I do have some uh, additional tips in there and also some things to keep in mind when working with uh, shadows and light colors, uh, some ways to make them uh, look a bit better as well. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.